All right, step on into my DMs, my Voxers, and my text messages. We are fresh off the heels of our 2022 annual copywriting for creatives launch. This is the big multiple six figure launch we do every year in my business. And I learned a lot as you do with any launch. So these are the messages that I've been talking to my peers, colleagues, and best friends about. And I thought I might as well let you in on the conversation and throw them your way as well. In this video, I'm gonna go through the seven biggest lessons I learned in this launch. And stay tuned till the end if you are a data nerd or a conversion copywriter, I'm gonna share some of the launch stats with you. So if you're into that, voila. If we've not yet met, hey there, my name is Ashlyn Carter. I'm a conversion copywriter and brand and launch strategist for creatives like you. Not knowing what to say or how to say it shouldn't be the thing that holds you back from making sales, and that's why I do what I do. By the way, I was pumped to get this launch of copywriting for creatives out the door because I could record my learnings and put them into the revamped Prime to Launch curriculum that I'm working on. Click below to hop onto the waitlist or just head to primetolaunch.com. Make sure you get your seat. This is a mini course too. It's a very low price, so you don't wanna miss it. Okay, let's get straight in. Lesson number one. Okay. Okay, you've got your suite of offers, the things you're putting out there, the spaghetti you know sticks to the wall. That's a big place to get to in and of itself, but once you are there and you've got the message and the hook of an offer dialed in, offer fatigue can happen. I've got a solution for you here. I'm not gonna leave you hanging, but yeah. So copywriting for creatives, we launched, this was our 11th time. It is a dang tough market to sell in these days as a creative entrepreneur, especially if you're offering something that is a little more high ticket. I talked about this in a post that I did on Instagram. It went a little viral for my little tiny numbers, but if you are interested, read that. I talked about the lipstick index effect and what that has on us as creative small business owners. Back to this launch as a case study. When I was initially thinking through what my quarterly champagne campaigns were, that's something I talk about inside Prime to Launch. I knew at the end of 2021, beginning of this year, that this fall launch had to crush. And as Q1 got going around March, I decided we couldn't do the Copywriting for Creatives launch two times this year. I needed to put my efforts on doing a ton of leadership development and team building. We completely shuffled and rebuilt about 50% of my entire team. I don't know how, but I accidentally built a business that's six and a half years old, being the only full-time employee, that was not smart. So I needed some more help, had to figure out how to get that in there. And I needed to put my efforts on that, which meant I couldn't do that in a launch. I'm gonna talk more about the energy that goes into a launch in a little bit, but couldn't do both. I needed to think long game style. I needed to get super clear on the overarching vision of my business. And I needed to make sure I had the right people on my team and work on culture. Team culture is one of those things you have even if you don't think you do. So I wanted to get um, real clear and certain on our values and my ability to communicate things like that, et cetera. So I'm looking out, I'm thinking this fall, it's gotta show up, which meant I needed a battle offer fatigue. So I decided to change up my usual webinar style launch with a challenge style launch. So that is the hype piece that I used to communicate the offer. If you're inside Prime to Launch, you know I give you a list of about a dozen different types of hype pieces you can use to communicate what your offer is and who it's for. So that's my first takeaway for you here. If you feel like you're battling a little bit of offer fatigue, see if you can change up the hype piece. Here's what we did. I went all out with the theme. I have some friends that are doing some cute camp style themes and uh, that's just, big surprise, not really me. So I dug deep and I tried to figure out what is something that I would have fun creating and running with. Well, what sounds fun? I knew the launch was gonna be around September, October and be around the time back to school is happening. I love school, I love academia and I like college football and the homecoming and those kind of vibes. So that's what I went with. I also wanted to push the envelope and go a little bit tongue in cheek and slightly over the top when it came to the branding of all this because remember my goal with this was we have got to get eyeballs and make noise and make a ruckus about this launch because this one's got to work. I was planning to go up to New Haven, Connecticut earlier this year anyway and so my photographer Abby came and we did some really awesome photos on Yale's campus actually in tandem with the pics we had to take anyway. It was very humbling to be standing on Yale's campus with pom-poms, but I did it. I had a contractor telling me that watching me and my team launch was like watching a cheetah in the wild, probably the best compliment I've ever gotten, but I think it was changing the hype piece that got me there because I was energized. I was so excited to get out there and launch it and I was having fun. That is a big part. We don't talk about launching. People like to complain about them and they are a lot and they're hard, but that was one of my big takeaways was how could I have fun with this and just change it up? Number two, trust the numbers and the data to tell the story, not your emotions. This wasn't a totally new lesson as much as a reminder. I tell this to clients and students all the time, launching is a numbers game. I talk a lot about working from a place of rest, not hustle. When I am in launch mode, and again, I'm gonna talk more about how I deal with the energy suck that that is, but one of the biggest things that helps me rest during a launch or a marketing promo period is the numbers. So this is how I work from a place 
of rest during the hustle that is a launch, I come back to the data. I have a friend that up until recently never looked at the launch data or the sales numbers or the stats during a marketing campaign period. Her thought behind it, and I get it, was to really focus on just working the plan that she already created. However, to me that feels a little bit like flying the plane without being able to look at the dashboard and the gas tank and the fuel and everything. What I realized again during this launch is that I ride that emotion roller coaster as much as anybody. It doesn't matter that we teach our clients how to launch, that I teach students how to launch, that I've launched a million times myself. It is an emotional roller coaster. It's mind game. Statistics I'm always checking during a launch are the number of people inside the hype piece, so how big my launch list is, sales of course, and then eyeballs to different pages. Because I know, as a copywriter, I can get a page performing at a certain conversion rate, so then I need to just worry about, well, how many eyeballs am I getting on that page every single day? I've actually always been a little bit of a nut about the numbers when it comes to a launch. They're my report card. So for example, I know if I'm doing a webinar and I don't get 30% or more people to actually show up live, I'm not giving myself a good grade on my report card because I know that I can hit 35 plus percent. One little takeaway for you if you've not yet, learn these benchmarks and these rates. I talk about that inside Prime to Launch and Copywriting for Creatives, but if you can start to know these numbers, you can let these drive your decisions and not your emotions. What I learned this launch about data that I haven't done in the past is the importance of a dashboard that I can look at. So in the past, we've typically just had somebody in Slack go in and post daily stats and numbers, and I hop into different tools and look to see what the rates are. But this year, because Meg came on as our director of marketing, hey Meg, and we brought Tatiana on as a project manager, hey Tatiana, she was able to create a dashboard that I could look at all the time. So that was immensely helpful, just one of those things that comes as you grow a team and I was so blessed to have that. Here's another pro tip. This could work for your first launch of something or your millionth launch of it. Build out a UTM tracker. I've done this for other things in my business but never for all the specific pieces during a launch. It was fantastic to be able to figure out exactly where people were coming from and what drove them to a page so we could figure out the action that came from that. Okay, let's get into number three. Comment below, is this helpful? I know this is a little bit different from the videos that I usually do, giving you a how-to. I'm just trying to talk to you business owner to business owner and tell you some of the things that I learned. Okay, number three, I learned how to run a marathon of a launch. I don't have a whole lot of bullet points here, just the concept that running a launch feels like a marathon. Again, that's why I teach inside Prime to launch how I do, but if you think about it, so we had our week before the hype piece, the hype piece week itself, and then the offer closing week. So that's three weeks to have your energy pretty dang high all the time. I remember day one and day two of our challenge this year telling Meg, I cannot sprint too hard like I want to right now because I know I need to sustain my energy to keep going. And as a webinar, sometimes has felt at least to me like a 10K or something, a challenge felt more like a half marathon or a marathon. You're showing up so much more and you're giving yourself out. The week after launch, I napped constantly, I rested, I felt like a cup that was completely empty. I had nothing else in me to talk about. I went ahead and put in an order of Daily Harvest. I'd never tried it before, but I was like, I need some freezer meals ready to go. I ordered a lot of emotional support candles. By the way, I have all of those linked on my Amazon page if you are a candle obsessed person too. I've also done a video in the past about things I do to prep for a launch. So yeah, that's my takeaway here. Number three, manage your energy. It's of the utmost importance. Lesson number four, I learned that diagnostic style teaching is insanely valuable. Don't discount it. One thing I really learned in doing the Homepage Homecoming Week Challenge is the importance of helping somebody diagnose their problem in what you're teaching. I've told this to clients before too. Getting somebody a mindset shift is just as much of a takeaway as teaching them how to do something. Honestly, sometimes if you can flip the way I think about something, sometimes that is far more valuable showing me how to do it because you've radically shifted the landscape on how I view that problem. That's huge. I needed people inside this challenge to walk away every single day with a mindset shift. And then I did wanna give about a 10-ish minute homework situation that they could do to see something tactical. I could go on and on there, that was a lot. One more pro tip when it comes to sharing and educating as you're in a launch, don't forget to show bits and pieces inside your program. My friend Angela over at Saffron Avenue is doing a great job of this in 
her emails. We also have a client named Tracy who's doing a good job of this in her Instagram stories, showing bits and pieces of the program. That's something I have to remind myself too of in a launch. Don't get so focused on the hype piece itself that you're not showing off whatever it is that you've built. Even if you're launching your service, I need to understand what it looks like to picture myself in that service, so show me the pieces. Lesson number five, I kept a list of the dominoes that I needed to fall in front of me the whole time. Okay, this goes out to my PTL Prime to Launch peeps. You know what I'm talking about when I talk about the dominoes that you set up in your content, the things that you need your audience to knock down so they can understand why they need your product or your offer or your service. When my director of marketing, Meg, came in town for us to work on the launch, we mapped out a whole list of all the different dominoes that we knew we needed to knock down in our launch content. This time though, for the first time, we put it on a big sticky note and I stuck it back there to my bookshelf, had it there the whole launch. This put me constantly in the position of remembering where my audience was and it didn't matter my vantage point on my offer and all that kind of stuff. I needed to be thinking like they were. Reminder, I teach all about this system inside Prime to Launch, so look below and get on the wait list. Lesson number six. I got more sure-footed about how I like to approach launch emails. So launch email sequences and campaigns are my favorite. The agency side of my business, we do that all the time for clients. I also have a product in my shop where I talk through the emails that you need in a campaign. And be sure to subscribe. Next week, I'm talking all about your launch emails in our weekly episode. But here's what I learned this launch. So earlier this year, not only were we building a team, we built an entire email server. That took a lot of energy. And when it comes to the messages that I'm dropping each day inside a launch on the email, I have those mapped out in advance. Usually I like them all the way written, but in the past I have gone back and forth between having them all written and loaded in so they just fire and I don't even have to think about it, or having them done and ready so I can tweak them. It is solidified. This launch, I like this second way better because I get so hyped and emotional during the launch, it's incredibly valuable for me to already have the sales argument and the bulk of the email structured. I love to be able to go in like hours before something sends and tweak something or be able to respond in the moment to things that we're hearing and be able to alter things. Not that I wouldn't ever do that the other way. The other approach to setting them all up was just Again, like when we had a smaller team, for me to be able to focus on where I needed to put my energy, because we were a little bit bigger this time, I've learned I really do like things to be ready and loaded in, but before we schedule them, I wanna make sure that I can get in and alter things based on what I'm hearing or what I'm most passionate about in the moment. And finally, lesson number seven, I was reminded to make sure each piece of my content during a launch down to the Instagram story can stand alone as its own individual thing. One of my best buddies texted me during our launch and she said, hey, I've got some feedback for you. Do you wanna know it? I said, yes, please. Tell me if there's spinach in my teeth, I need to know. She said, some of your stories are good, but A, you need to get louder. I felt like I was screaming. I say that all the time. You think you're being loud and you're talking in a normal sized voice though on the internet to other people. So I needed to get loud. And then she also said, I thought your launch was over based on the Instagram you did about your launch week. She was like, I don't know, just the way it came across. So you need to get back in there and you need to start making sure that you're explaining pitching this program and what's in it. That was a great reminder for me because imagine how many people during your launch Again, that's the purpose of a launch. It's a marketing promo campaign. You're bringing new eyeballs in. So you've got people that are coming into the middle of the story and you cannot leave them out. It's so easy during a promo campaign to be so focused on the storyline that you're architecting and I get it, I love that, but we just can't negate the fact that some people are coming in to the movie in the middle and you need to make sure you've got moments where you catch them up. Okay, now to the numbers. I always set good, better, best goals for anything I do. For this launch, we surpassed my good goal. We were just shy of my better goal. Reminder back to letting the numbers tell the story and not your emotions. The numbers told me that was a good thing. We hit our goal, so I had to rest in that. We came in total sales right under 300K. It's a $997 offer, so you can do math. The sales page converted at 8.5%, which is kind of nuts. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. An average conversion rate on a sales page is two to 5%, but remember, I write sales pages for a living, so I hope mine my own can perform well. Okay, so I definitely don't have all the answers when it comes to launching, but I love them. I think they're so fun, as long as I don't have to do them 24 seven. Again, quarterly champagne campaign system for the win. But being in the arena of a launch is so stinking fun to me. 
as long as I can nap afterwards. This one got me stoked to revisit the Prime to Watch curriculum for that mini course. Again, pop down below, get on the wait list. I cannot wait to get that new version out. And I hope that by sharing these seven lessons with you, you're excited about whatever it is you have to launch next. And you know, you can do it even in this economy. You may just need to be open to making some changes. If you like this video, let me know by clicking the like button. Hit subscribe. Again, we're talking about launch emails in next week's video. Share it with a business bestie or mastermind buddy and comment below if you've got any questions about launches. I can't talk enough about them. Thank you so much for watching. I know this wasn't the traditional how-to videos that I do, but I thought bringing you a little bit behind the scenes and having more of a raw overview of something that we did might be helpful. One of the best things you can do before you launch is make sure that your website is in ship shape. So be sure to watch this next video. I've got teed up for you. I'm talking through the four must-have pages you need to have ready to rock and roll on your website. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.